They just keep asking. Where's the build, Kevin? It never I know stops. It, they so know I have the build, God, but I need more time. The build? They've surrounded me. The there is the no way out. I need, I need to bargain with them. I need my person. freedom again. Okay, please, the best I can give you is two. Two what? Two builds. Make it three or no. Fine, right, fine, I'll make three. That's right, you submissive peasant. So. What's the deal with Stamblade builds, am I right? <laughs> I am sick of making one build per video and then explaining my other variants in the comments section. I can't do it. This build isn't practical for VMA. I can't do it. This is unattainable for beginners. You call this an advanced build? I know it says beginner's build in the title, but even a beginner should be pulling 50k single target DPS! Enough! Today you're getting all three. We've got an easy to make build for beginners, an advanced build for trials, veteran hard mode dungeons, etc., and a build specifically made for Stamblade VMA. All of these are strictly PvE. The same CP, same rotation, food, potions, passives, all that junk. All you need is the gear to make it to the big leagues. Now before I begin, let me just mention that all of these builds can hit at least 35,000 single target DPS, which is quite above average, especially as 20,000 is still considered decent. Starting with the basics, let's talk about the essential stuff you'll need for your little adventure. For Stamblades, Dubious Gamoran Throne for food is about as important to your build as a Slurpee is to a kid in grade school. It gives max stamina, stamina recovery, and a very good chunk of health. Finally. For your drugs, I mean pot, I, I mean potions, frick my life, you're gonna want Essence of Weapon Power. This restores 7500 stamina, increases your stamina recovery by 20%, grants major brutality and major savagery, increasing your weapon damage and critical. These bad boys are crafted using Blessed Thistle, Dragon Thorn, and Water Hyacinth. For CP, this is what I personally have. With this setup, I can easily hit those DPS marks, provides a ton of resource regain, and a lot of defense. 72 into Ironclad, 44 into Thick Skin, 56 into Hardy, 48 into Elemental Defender, 30 into Bastion, 30 into Warlord, 80 into Mooncalf, 43 into Tenacity, 22 into Healthy, 40 into Tumbling, 35 into Shadow Ward, 63 into Master at Arms, 59 into Precise Strikes, 40 into Thaumaturge, 28 into Piercing, and 60 into Mighty. Moving on! We won't talk about rotation right now, but we'll certainly talk about the passives you want. For those of you new to ESO, passives aren't abilities you activate, those are active abilities if you couldn't already guess, they simply provide you with extra perks and benefits. Obviously, acquire all of your class passives for bonus damage, crit, regen, and resource gain. Your weapons of choice are dual wield and bow, so grab all of those passives as well. Most of the time, you'll be using full medium armor setups, so get all of those passives, but in case you decide to run 5 medium and 2 heavy, just for some extra resistance and health, grab the first 3 passives under heavy. Under Fighter's Guild, get Slayer, Banish the Wicked, and Skill Tracker, which help out a lot in dungeons with Undead, Werewolves, and Daedra, not to mention adding bonus weapon damage and ultimate regeneration. Now go to the Mage's Guild, not the Skill Tree, the actual place, run in there, call them all a bunch of nerds! Hey you, you're all a bunch of nerds! And now move on to the Undaunted Tree. Grab both of these passives here for a synergy activated regen and a just in general resource increase. And obviously get all of your racial passives. Speaking of race, with Stamblade, I'd highly recommend Redguard just for the sustain, but two other good choices are Khajiit and Wood Elf, just cause they have extra critical. Alright, let's get on with the builds. And of course, we want to start with the basic beginner build, which is actually still quite powerful. First off, you'll be getting two pieces of either Veladreth or Selene's if you don't have the DLC. These monster helms deal a great amount of burst damage and are obtained through Veteran Cradle of Shadows for Veladreth or Selene's Web for, well, Selene's. Then either craft yourself or get someone to craft for you five pieces of Hunting's Rage and five pieces of Night Mother's Gaze. Now that jewelry crafting is a thing, these two sets are absolutely devastating together. Plus, your bow now counts as two item pieces, not just one. You'll want all divines on the armor with health glyphs on the helmet and the shoulders, and stamina glyphs on all the rest. 
you'll want to get three pieces of infused jewelry, all with weapon damage glyphs on them. Now for your weapons, I'd usually recommend literally running Total Nernhone to up your damage, but I understand that Nernhone can be quite hard to acquire or research. So with that in mind, go for a sharpened sword, a precise axe, and an infused bow. Slap a weapon damage enchant on the sword, a poison on the axe, and a damage shield on the bow, enhanced by the infused trait. Next up, we have the advanced build, the build that you build by building the beginner's build to build. You've started running the more difficult content, so it's time to start using that new gear. First off, as difficult as it may be, you need to run the Veteran Cloud Rest Trial to acquire not just the dorky loser reliquins gear, oh no! You want the perfected gear. Now you always want at least one of those trial sets just for the Minor Slayer, increasing your damage done to dungeon and trial monsters. With the perfected reliquins, you also get a bonus 5 piece stamina perk and the absolutely insane amount of stackable damage from harmful winds, basically making you a Jenga of death. Just remember to light and heavy attack in order to stack it up. Then you'll be running Twice Fang Serpent, which adds critical, stamina, damage, and stackable penetration. On all of this armor, once again, the Divine Trait. Remember to have Prismatic Glyphs on the helmet, chest, and the pants, and then stamina glyphs on all the rest. Also, infuse jewelry with, you guessed it, weapon damage glyphs. I want your weapon damage higher than a kite on 420. Finally, you'll want to grind for Master's Dual Wield and Master's Bow weapons. Whatever you get, put them into Nernhone, Crusher and Poison Enchants on the dual wield weapons, and then a weapon damage glyph on the bow. And finally, a build people have been asking non-stop for, an easy mode VMA build. First off, Veladrith, a great set of burst disease damage. Then, Briarhearts, literally your bread and butter of this build. Not only does dealing critical damage increase your damage by close to 450 for 10 seconds, every critical strike will heal you for a ton during that duration. And finally, good old reliable Vicious Affidia. Now I know people might argue that running Reliquent here instead might be better because it would deal more damage, but in VMA, you're not just going for pure damage, you need sustain or you will die. So Vicious still gives that minor slayer, but it also reduces the cost of stamina abilities up to 8%, while killing an enemy restores over 2,000 stamina and gives Major Expedition for 20 seconds. And now, guess what the traits are on all of this armor? You got it! Impenetrable! The best for PvE! I'm joking. That would be ridiculous. Don't be stupid. It's Divines. Now for this setup, we'll have a helmet and chest with prismatic, and then all of the rest with stamina, the raisin bran of glyphs. Now for jewelry, a little bit different here. We're still going with the three weapon damage glyphs, but this time, two of them have infused, and one of them is bloodthirsty. I found that having bloodthirsty on at least one piece allowed for a much quicker finishing off of bosses or groups of enemies. For weapons, your dual wield and bow will have Nernhoned, surprise surprise, and for enchantments, one one-hander with a weapon damage enchant and the other with a crusher enchantment, whereas your bow will have a disease damage enchant. So now that we've got all of that sorted out, let's talk about abilities. For your dual wield bar, Blade Cloak, basically your only ability damage shield and AoE damage. Surprise Attack, your main spamming attack ability. Rending Slashes, a damage over time ability that bleeds an enemy out. Killer's Blade, basically you replace Surprise Attack with this ability when an enemy is at 25% health or lower. Relentless Focus, grants a damage and regeneration buff, as well as when you hit an enemy with 5 light or heavy attacks, it gives you a bonus attack which fires a 19,000 disease damage arrow. Finally, Flawless Dawnbreaker, basically only slotted for massive AoE situations and for the amazing weapon damage increase. And on your bow bar, Endless Hail, a target area of constant damage for 10 seconds. Rearming Trap, once again, just a trap that snares an enemy and deals constant damage for 6 seconds, also granting you minor force. Poison Injection, an arrow that deals an initial burst of 5500 damage, plus another 10,000 poison damage over 10 seconds, which also deals more damage to enemies under 50% health. Razor Caltrops, another target AoE damage ability that deals an initial burst of damage, followed by 12 seconds of extra damage. Leeching Strikes, your light and heavy attacks regain stamina and health, and when the ability ends, you restore a burst of stamina. 
Finally, Incapacitating Strike. This ultimate deals a ton of burst damage, but most importantly, you deal 20% more damage to the enemy for 6 seconds. Now if you're running VMA, I'd say swap Leeching Strikes for Resolving Vigor, as you need a good source of healing in VMA, and the build we have is pretty good on recovery. So, after that lengthy and rather nerdy explanation of abilities, let's get to killing stuff! Remember, there is no greater teacher than going insane doing the same thing over and over again until you have it down pat. Start by buffing up, Relentless Focus, Blade Cloak, and then swap to your bow bar and activate Leeching Strikes. This is the moment that you pop your potion to regain stamina from buffing up and giving you damage. First, Endless Hail, Rearming Trap, Light Attack, Keltrops, Light Attack, Poison Injection, Light Attack, and then, if it's up, Ultimate in cap. Now a quick reminder, potions regain 20 ultimate, casting a siphoning ability regains 2 every 4 seconds, and killing undead, daedra, and werewolves generates 9 ultimate, so your in cap should be up quite often. Alright, time to swap to your beat the tar out of them bar. Your relentless focus and blade cloak are still up, so now all you need to do is... Immediately after you swap, you light attack, surprise attack, heavy attack, rending slashes, light attack, and then, at this point, your spectral bow should be up, so fire! 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 After that's out of the way, restart your relentless focus and do two quick combos of a light attack surprise attack, end it off with a heavy attack, rebuff your blade cloak, and then swap back to your bow bar. That was just a simple demonstration. If you want the written down version so you don't have to watch that all over again, check the description below. Yes, it's complicated. Yes, there are many little light and heavy attacks to try to throw in there. And yes, you will mess up several times. But hey, that's my personal rotation. If you hate it, you can always change it. Holy crap, I just realized that this is one of my few videos that's actually over 10 minutes. I'm gonna be rolling in the money, baby! <clears throat> I mean, thank you for watching. But remember, if you want to cause upwards of 200,000 damage per second without any armor at all, all you need to do is to...